Okay guys, welcome back to Bee Trapping. Um, I normally don't like to do this. As you can see, I have three hives here. This one's in great shape, and this one's in great shape. And this was definitely my strongest hive going into winter. They were my biggest producer. All three of these hives were packages last year. They all did exceptionally well. This hive was always my biggest and best. And they all they all came out of winter all right. And I'm beginning to notice with this one is they're not really I, I don't see near the bee population that I do in these other two. It's not even close. Um, they're really not eating any of the patties I put in. The other two are devouring them. And I know there's a lot of space on this hive, so I'm hoping that has something to do with it. I'm going to try to remove a couple of these boxes and stuff like that. And I'm hoping that they're not queenless. But uh, I have a sneaking suspicion that I think they might be, just based on their activities. If they are queenless based on the time of the year here in Ohio, um, I don't believe, I just know for a fact, I, I, I'm i sure this hive might raise a queen, but I don't. there's not enough drones and things around here at this time of year to get her bred. I mean, I could order in a queen, but I've, online, there's, you know, they're hard to come by right now. It's kind of early in the year. A lot of guys already have them spoken for. And, you know, there's a good chance I spend $25, $35, $40 on a queen and because of the bee population this high, there might not be enough in there to support her anyway. So uh, what I plan to do today is tear into this hive. It's 60 degrees here today. Tear into this hive, hoping that I do find maybe just a small patch of brood and she's still in there. And maybe they've been so reluctant to, to fly and do things just because they didn't have the population. You know, maybe they had quite the die off in the winter or something and just didn't have the population to support brood and couldn't leave it. And so... They've, you know, just been hunkering down a lot, but uh, I just I just think they might be queenless. If they are queenless, uh, I think I'm just going to combine them right over here with hive number two. They were always weaker last year. Now they seem fine right now, but I'll just combine them together, hoping that these bees will help this hive out, and then I'll make some splits and some nukes and stuff from them, uh, you know, uh, later this spring. So, all right, I'm going to get it opened, and uh, I will... Uh, Bring you guys along with me as I kind of dig through it. Okay guys, sorry I didn't really uh, have a good opportunity. I had quite a mess going on here. Um, so I did find a little small patch of brood up in the top box. So that I am pretty happy about. Um, so she is in there. I didn't look for her. I saw the brood. I kind of set the box aside. Um, I had quite the mess. This is for you new beginning beekeepers. Learn from me. Left out some frames, had cross comb everywhere, um, and the real thing was, I'm glad I opened it, these are the number of dead bees that were on the bottom board in that hive. Very wet, very sticky, just not a good situation. They were all laying on the screen bottom board, just thousands of them. Why they died, I don't know. Here is another, here's the deep that was on the bottom. And you can see it's just completely full, molded, molded bees. So I don't know if there was a moisture problem inside the hive. And that's what got them. Um, but luckily, there is a small patch of brood in the top box. I saw that. I had way too many boxes on there, obviously. The hive's not that strong. I condensed them down. I'm going to shake some of these boxes here and get any bees out of them that I can into the front. I took off the sugar board. I put on some syrup feeders as you see. I put some dry sugar in there just in case somebody wants it. I put pollen patties um, in between both boxes. I assume she's going to keep right on laying. Again, I didn't try to find her, but there was worker brood in there capped. So I assume she's in there. They did not act hiveless or queenless, excuse me, when I opened it. There was no roar. There was nothing like that. They acted just like normal bees. So I think they're just, they were sick coming out. And uh, for whatever reason, or they had a large number of them die in the winter. And they just don't have the population yet to care for the brood. And because I had so many boxes on it, I just don't think they could maintain it and take care of it. So I'm glad I got in there. 
I think this is probably going to save them or at least get them from overrun with wax moth or small hive beetle or something like that, obviously. Um, there was just thousands and thousands of dead bees on the inside. So uh, I'm going to uh, shake some of these boxes down in front, get any bees off of the can and get these out of here. And I'm going to tear apart this. Uh... Oh, my dad's tearing it apart right now. My little boy's over here. As you can see, I mean, this is the old brood box that they had. Um, they still got bee bread in there. I can I can see that. They got bee bread hey, on it. I got to look at all these dead bees. Yeah, a lot of dead bees in there, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. And you can see the old brood, brood comb. So they weren't down here at all. Um, there, were hard, there were no bees in the bottom box when rightfully so. And you can just see there is some kind of moisture problem going on or something within the hive. Here's another group of dead bees. See they got plenty of pollen in their combs but she's just not laying down here probably because of all the dead bees and it wasn't sanitary for her. You can just see, see them all. So uh, I know a lot of beekeepers don't want to open their hives early but I think if I wouldn't open this uh, these girls weren't going to make it probably. Um, so you can definitely see there's a lot of bee bread and a lot of pollen and stuff in this frame. So I'll probably I'll I'll put these through the uh, through the freezer, and then I will uh, I will uh, get them probably put back on that hive at some point in time. I just put a couple mediums down there on the bottom, which I'm fine with, and uh, I'll get these put back on here later this summer sometime. So, all right, thanks for watching. Okay, so you guys just saw me kind of get into the hive and kind of do an explanation in the field of the beehive that I kind of tore apart. And now after looking back on the footage and kind of looking at the frames and, in you know, kind of deductively reasoning what, what I think happened, um, I think I've kind of narrowed down what has taken place. So the biggest thing that I can tell you is my hives were packages last year. They did exceptionally well. I fed them syrup to get them started. I never fed them a pollen pad or anything like that. They have plenty of nectar sources. I live in a good environment for them to forage, and my hives did incredibly well. I took a lot of honey off those hives, actually, and still they had a lot of honey on them to overwinter with. Um, I think my biggest downfall was that I didn't take Varroa and things like that as seriously as what I should have. I did a powdered sugar treatment because I saw people online do it. I really wasn't sure about chemicals to put into the hive. I wasn't sure which which uh, treatment I wanted to use, you know, and I was just kind of scared and uncertain about what to what to do. So I did the powdered sugar treatment because I figured that was easy. I had powdered sugar. They claim that you know the bees will groom themselves. Um, any mites, they, they might fall off. You see them on your your bottom board. I have screen bottom boards in those three hives. And I did the treatment. I looked at the boards over the next several days, and I saw no mites. I kind of assumed there were some mites in the hive, but I didn't see anything. So I didn't figure that there was a huge problem, and I figured they would overwinter, and I would treat in the spring after I did my research uh, to which treatment I would like to have. Well, my hives came out of winter, they're all alive. Um, and what I began to notice is there was a dwindling in that third colony. And my third colony was my strongest colony. It was huge. It, it provided the most honey, it, it did all these things. And I thought it was gonna be the one that overwintered the best. But that's the thing about varroa mites. They have an exponential growth. The bigger your hive, the more at danger your hive is to failing from rural mites. And after kind of going back and looking at everything, I believe that that end hive it had that parasitic mite syndrome or varosis, as some people call it, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. It's basically death by varroa. And um, what I have in here is some of the frames that are out of that hive. And I began to do some research online about varroa and signs that your hives die from varroa and I found a lot of people talking about guanine. Guanine is an amino acid, it occurs in all proteins, it is a deposit that these varroa leave behind when they are reproducing within the cells. If you look at my frames, there is an incredible amount of guanine in 
these cells. I'm going to try to attempt to show you um, some of this guanine in some of these frames right now. Okay, guys, so what I have here is uh, some of the brood frames that I pulled out of that hive that I think uh, died from, well, they didn't die, but they dwindled drastically from this virosis or parasitic mite treatment. And what I'm trying to show you is if you hold a frame just right, you can kind of see it right up there. That's a good view. See those little white specks that are within the frame? See them all across the top up there? In the top combs? That's what's known as guanine. Um, and that's for, for better, it's an amino acid, but it's basically, you know, an, a waste product left over from mite reproduction within the hives. And you can kind of see it in the cells. Another thing I want to point out since I'm right here, this kind of webbing that you can see going up through the frame. I don't know how well it's showing up, but there's some more of it. It goes all the way up there to the top. That is wax moth. So a larva has burrowed through there and left that, that webbing behind at some point in time, whether it be early spring or it could have been late fall. If these guys died, you know, in November or December, and they could have had some, uh, still had some uh, wax moth around. That is the leftover remnants of a wax moth being in there. You go ahead and freeze that. You know, it'll kill any eggs or anything that's kind of left behind within there. I'll show you some more views here of the frame. You can start to see. Now, some of this is debris, you know, that may have fallen on the frame when I was taking them out. But you can see some more of the uh, guanine right there. Got a couple more frames here. which you can see and that is basically the remnants of a serious varroa infestation and there's a lot on this side you can see it some of that's debris right there some wax on the outside but inside the cells you can see it and I didn't treat the hives like I should have and this is a huge booming hive and this is going to be the price you pay now this is one of the upper mediums where they they were laying a lot in the uh, summer last year and i found these little patches of brood within the hive now a lot of people look at the color of that and they say oh it's going to be american fowl brood i did the toothpicks test on several of them you know there's nothing to me that screams out american fowl brood especially when you look at all the guanine that's in these cells going down through here. Again, I'm hoping it's showing up for you guys to see it. See a lot of it right there. Now, I believe that either these this this brood was killed off. You know, I, I don't I don't know when it was laid. Obviously, it's a spotty, uh, spotty brood pattern. You know, I, I don't know if she laid it like that or stuff hatched out in the middle. It, it's hard to say. Um, I know virosis can lead to spotty brood, and she was a really good laying queen. Um, but I do see that some bees are either died on their way chewing out, or the bees themselves chewed open the cappings to kill them. So I believe that this is uh, brood death because of parasitic mice disorder, or it could have also been chilled brood. They could have been raising this in, you know, January, February, trying to make, you know, that small batch when they get going in for the spring. And because of the death that we had in that hive where thousands and thousands of bees died, they could have just not been able to, you know, surround it. And we had some chilled brood happening. So basically learn from me, learn from my mistakes. Even if it's a first year hive, you need to treat for Varroa. Whatever that may be, however you're going to do it, you need a plan in place. No bees are safe. My bees were a first-year package. There's no bees around me except for these bees, you know, and they're going to bring you the Varroa with them in the package or uh, 
they're going to get it from gathering nectar somewhere and, and, and that they're a parasite. That's just how it works. So, uh, I hope you guys learned something, um, learn from my failures and use it for your success. Uh, thanks for watching.